Good afternoon, everybody. We are continuing our study on life, answering the question, is life fragile? Specifically, inviting you to ask the question, is my life fragile? Is, is your life fragile? Today, we're going to be looking at finally getting to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We're going to look at two passages, John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, and then we're going to skip, at least what I read to you, we're going to skip to 11, 12, and 13. And that's what I'm going to read to you today. Obviously, you are invited and encouraged to read the whole chapter um, of John chapter 1, and it is going to, to introduce us um, to the origin of life, and, and maybe more important than that, the source of life. So, um, let me read you the verses, then we'll talk about it a little bit. First, verses 4 and 5, John chapter 1. John writes, In Him, he's talking about Jesus here, the Word made flesh. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Did you get that? In Him was life. In Him was life. So who is the source of life? Or what, however you want to say that, is the source of life? It's not a what, it's a who. Jesus is the source of life. Then verses 11 through 13. Again, Jesus, He came to His own, and His own people did not receive Him. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God, who were not born, notice that word, born, who were not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So, in verses 4 and 5, we hear that Jesus is life, that He's the source of life. And in verses 11 through 13, we hear that He came into the world in order to give this right to become children of God, something that only God can do. So we hear about life, and we hear about new life. Already in this, these, these two passages, these first 13 verses of John chapter 1. What this points to is very fundamental, very important, and it's this. The source of all life, temporal and eternal, is this Word that became flesh. This is what the author of Hebrews explains when he writes about Jesus. He says, He is the radiance of the glory of God, an exact imprint of His nature, and He, Jesus, upholds the universe by the Word of His power. Wow! He upholds the universe by the Word of His power. This is Jesus. This is the one who died for your sins. He overcame death and the grave. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He rules over all things. He upholds the universe by the word of His power. And this Jesus, and this is key, this is so important, He enters into our midst so that we might become children of God. He comes to us to do exactly what's described in verses 11 through 13. Jesus comes into our midst. He is found where His Word is proclaimed. He is found where His gifts of baptism and where His supper are administered. Jesus is found there. The Lord of life is found there, giving life, giving eternal life through the forgiveness of sins. All right, so why is that important? <laughs> well, I mean, forgiveness of sins is important. Um, eternal life, victory over death, that's pretty important, right? Can't underestimate the importance or under, under, under um, can't speak too little on those things. And this is a, a focus for us always in, in every sermon and every Bible study that we have. Um, but I want to encourage you also uh, to think then about what the impact of these, these, these cosmic truths has on your life today and the decisions that you have to make today. 
Um, in other words, let's let's talk about the how this changes our view of of life in this world, how it changes our worldview, or should change our worldview, because it's with the way the way that we view the world impacts the decisions we make throughout our day, the decisions that you'll make today. So, so I want to invite you to to read these passages from John chapter one, thinking about that. How do these cosmic, ultra-important truths impact the decisions that you have before you today. Know it or not, most of us, and I'm just talking really about Christians here, even though it's probably true beyond us, but, but most of us as Christians have been distracted when it comes to how we view life and how we view death. And we make decisions based on a worldview that isn't exactly biblical. For example, I have three examples. We spend more time talking about what happens when we die than we do talking about what will happen when Christ returns. Don't we? When we're comforting people, we usually talk about what happens when they die. When we think about our own lives, we think about living our life in this world and then dying and then going to heaven. We don't really anticipate Christ's return like the apostles did, like the early Christians did as we see recorded in the scriptures. That has an impact. This is, this is part of our worldview. Our, part of our worldview is that we are going to live our lives however long they are in this world and Christ is going to come back sometime after we have died. That's part of your average Christian's worldview, and that's not a biblical worldview. Number two, we get distracted and we get confused about life and death issues because we spend a lot of time talking about, again, as Christians, the origin of life, but we spend very little time talking about the source of life. We recognize that in the beginning God created all things, but we don't recognize that he sustains all things. We'll talk about that more in a minute. The third point is we think, and this, this, is, this goes right along with point number two, we tend to think of life in terms of codependency. In, er, in other words, the, the circle of life, like the Lion King, right? We recognize, I hope, that, that there's an interdependency, not just between you and I, between family members or something like that, or even just between humans, but, but there's a relationship between one part of creation and another part of creation. There's a, an interdependency or a codependency. And, and we recognize that. We, we talk about that. Even the unbeliever recognizes that. But what we don't recognize, what we fail to recognize, is our complete dependency on the one who created nature, the one who created the universe. We fail to recognize the sovereignty of God. We like to think that the codependency that we have with one another, the interdependency is probably a better word, that we have with one another and with creation, we like to pretend like somehow that, that spills over into our relationship with God when it doesn't. He's sovereign. And, and we are completely dependent on Him, even though He is not in any way dependent on us. Right? These are three examples of priorities that have a huge impact. They're not just like theological or philosophical conversations, but they have a huge impact on how we choose to live our everyday lives and the decisions that we make. The decisions you make today are impacted by these big ticket thoughts, if you will, right? Worldview matters. And if we want to correct biblical worldview, one of the first places we should go is to John chapter 1. Because it starts at the beginning. And then it explains our life, even today. What God has done. How humanity has responded. And what Christ has accomplished on our behalf. Understanding life and death issues is key to making good decisions today. And we're not going to understand the big life and death issues 
without taking the time to read, learn, and inwardly digest John chapter 1. Someone whose goal is simply to make the most of their life in this world, who thinks that God is a powerful being who created all things and now simply sits back and watches what he has set in motion, the person who does not understand that there is no life apart from God and they are completely dependent on him, that person is going to make much different decisions because they're coming from a completely different and unbiblical worldview. Now again, I want to invite you, take the time to read, learn, and inwardly digest John chapter 1. And after you have, I want to point you ahead also to John chapter 6. Because the person who believes what you read today in John chapter 1 is going to sound a lot like the Apostle Peter in John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, we have a great example of these two different worldviews that I'm talking about and, and how they are in conflict one, with one another and how they, they, the worldviews actually lead in opposite directions. And so I want to read John chapter 6 to you, part of it. What's happened is this, John, pardon me, Jesus has just told the crowds um, that are following him. He has huge crowds of disciples, along with his 12 disciples. There are huge crowds of disciples that have been following him. And those crowds have grown, some of them disciples, some of them just looking for more food and for healings and stuff like that. But he's got a large, large group of disciples that are following him. And, and this is the place where he says, I am the bread of life. Okay. After the miraculous feeding, he has said this to them. Remember, John has all these great I am statements in them. And here he has said, I am the bread of life. And, and he's really taken this to a point um, where, where they're struggling. He says his disciples, the, the large group of disciples are struggling because he said, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him upon the last day. In response to these startling words, John writes, When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you, the words that I have spoken to you, are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, John writes, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go away as well. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This is the difference between these two worldviews. They all follow Jesus. One group followed Jesus for what they thought he could do for them in this world. The other followed Jesus because they recognized without Jesus there really was no life at all. I hope that you will enjoy reading John chapter 1, and I look forward to hearing your comments. If you have questions about it that I can answer, please let me know. I would also be interested in knowing um, um, a little bit about how you apply this personally. I, I mean, where it's appropriate. I, I would... I would love to know Be, because these, these, these verses, these passages that I'm sharing with you, as I said before, they do have a direct impact on the day-to-day the -day decisions we make about our lives. Remember, the, the overarching question um, that, that I've been asking you throughout all of these readings is, is your life fragile? Is your life fragile? 
This is such an important question for us to ask as Christians. Because it's so easy for us to be afraid and make decisions based on fear. It's so easy for us to be intimidated and make decisions based on the fact that that we feel intimidated. But you are children of God. You are heirs of the kingdom of God. You have been made imperishable and eternal by Jesus Christ, the Son of God Himself, the one who upholds the universe through His word of power. Does this mean anything for you as you make decisions about what to do with the gifts that God has given you today? Does, Does this have any impact as, as you make decisions about whether or not to share God's Word, whether or not to take risks, whether or not to come to church to receive the gifts of forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation from all this stuff in this fallen world that we should be scared of or would be scared of if it wasn't for the fact that the Word has become flesh and He dwells among us. Who has the words of eternal life? He's the one we want to be near. He's the one who can keep us from being afraid. He's the one who causes us to answer the question, Is my life fragile? No, not at all. A lot for you to think about. God bless your consideration of this text, especially John chapter 1. And God bless your week.